How's it going, everyone? Um, I am drawing a creature today for the Heroes Tears RPG. It's going to be awesome. It's basically an Elasmosaurus. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's like a Plesiosaur, like uh, the Loch Ness Monster or something. Um, difference being, instead of four flippers, it has legs in the back, um, and it's kind of has a wider base. And um, fins, the two fins that it does have were described as um, being wing-like, and then the tail in the back is going to need to move from side to side. So I got a bunch of reference that... Um, you know, showed me some wider looking fish. Uh, I got the Elasmosaurus reference and I kind of got an idea of what this creature is going to look like in my head. So I went in and drew it in black and white here. Um, basically what you do, you just grab a brush with black, uh, put in the base shape, then grab a brush with white, put in some highlights uh, and then blend it all by like using alt for color picking. Um, and once you get a pretty decent uh, grayscale drawing, you can go back in and pretty easily color it. Um, I think the drawing took me, I want to say three hours, and then the coloring to finish and detailing took about uh, an hour and a half. So the whole thing is four and a half hours. Um, here I'm just grabbing extra reference uh, I like the catfish look I already had the whale shark for like a wider head and these are suggestions obviously they like neither looks like my end creature um, part of the problem with this creature was I was battling between making it look like a predator um, and you can see like amore eel is a predator uh, alligator is a predator or a crocodile is a predator like these all have narrow snouts for like attacking things um and it's supposed to be able to to attack things but it was also described as being a wider looking creature um but in the end what i opted to do um the client was happy with so um his name's martin lambert by the way if you're curious uh check out heroes tears i think it's releasing i don't know if i said this already but it's releasing uh labor day of this year 2015 at dragon con uh so that'll be exciting i will be there if you want to visit me um so i got some kind of weird fish fins that i liked um for those fins you can see that they're, they're like they really do like look like wing fins so i was pretty happy with those uh i was looking at like flying fish as well so um Anyway, I was pretty happy with how, how those worked out, and I was going to go for a more colorful look. Here I'm just selecting um, the area around it uh, to be... Um, I'm actually going to invert this selection and then fill a layer below it with gray and then merge both of them down. That's going to allow me to have a completely opaque um, drawing instead of a drawing with like little gaps. Um, basically, what that allows me to do is I can add... Um, any kind of layer I want and then merge down. It won't alter the look of what that layer looked like. Um, here I'm just making a brush for scales because um, I have to. There's a lot of scales on this creature. I need to make them look scaly and not spend 10 hours doing it. Um, so brush for scale is good. Um, I make several layers, uh, color and soft light. I start with color for the, for the local color. Um, and then soft light to kind of glaze in variation after that. A lot of people use gradient maps to color their whole thing. Um, I'm, I'll, I'll, I feel it's a little out of control for me, um, to be honest, but I have tried it and I do use it occasionally. Um, but anyway, I like uh, how, how this goes. Um, I don't think it's a problem at all. Um, I'm basically using... Uh, alt holding alt and click after i make a layer uh that soft light layer or whatever it is above my normal drawing i will hold alt and click between the layers to um kind of lock the top layer to the bottom one so it can't go outside that layer um and it allows me to just quickly paint within the lines basically um and now i am kind of messing around with the look of the uh scales here um and I keep on altering the brush until it looks right. And I kind of alter it down to a single row of, 
I mean, it's almost a single row of scales. Um, basically, the whole brush is just one scale, and then I'm using scattering and um, like the number of times it's duplicated and everything to adjust what that brush looks like. And you can change like the angle of the scale and whatever, but I just opted to have it be a directional brush. And um, so I'm basically able to paint on a row of scales, a row and a half or whatever, um, make it look somewhat correct. Uh, and I get a, like a sense of what those scales look like, and then I'll go back in and, um, detail them with a, a round brush. Um, and it's, it's somewhat round. I think it's like 50% hard or whatever. Uh, but, um, or instead of soft, right? So, um, anyway, going back into the colors and now I'm just, I have a normal layer above everything and I'm just color picking using alt, um, clicking onto the image itself. Uh, and eventually I, um, yeah, here we go. So I'm, I'm doing a gradient map here. Uh, so I make two gradient maps. One's warm. You can see, you, if you want to pause the video, you can see the actual gradient maps that I used. Um, one's warm from like a really dark red near black uh, to a orange to a yellow. And that's set to soft light about 25%. And the other one is like mid blue to light blue, both grayish kind of desaturated and I set that to hue and about 13% and um, I'll mask both off completely black the warm one I'll reveal portions closer to me and the cool one I'll reveal portions further away they're both locked to the layer of the drawing um, so that allows me to just push the depth of the whole thing and typically I don't use this for characters that are like just humans standing straight up um, you can it just looks a little pushed like how much mist are they standing in or whatever right but this is like a 40 foot long creature um coming at us and so you know the tail's 40 feet away and the head is right here so i feel that that push really helps and you can um i was about to say <laughs> i had a portion of this video that i actually deleted that showed um bits of another set of creatures and i did the same thing with another very long creature that was um coming at us but uh anyway so here i'm just going in and detailing it's a normal layer i'm color picking um i will occasionally actually grab colors from my reference um as i paint uh i don't think i do it here necessarily but um and occasionally i'll actually just choose the color i want to add um up the top right you can just change the sliders but uh that's pretty rare i think i have all the colors that i ever want on the creature right now um and something to keep in mind for this uh i could go in and detail every single scale across the entire body um but it's not necessarily gonna gonna help the end product because this is going into a book it's gonna be like maybe two maybe four inches wide um people just will not be able to see all the detail i put into this uh completely um so it doesn't really matter that I get like if I go in and edit all the scales in the on the tail or something. Um, I just need to get a sense that they're there uh, and have it not look bad, not look unfinished. So, um, yeah, what I end up with here is just uh, what I feel is solid for where it's going in the book, and. Um, and I'm gonna uh, finish off this by quickly describing um, sort of sort of how I'm going to end the drawing because it ends pretty abruptly. Basically, I make um, selections um, that are just the geometric selection tool. Uh, twenty percent, or not twenty percent, uh, twenty feathering, twenty pixel feathering, um, to indicate that light is hitting it and going through atmosphere and um, going down. Uh, so you'll see that at the end of the video. And then up until that point, I add a few soft light layers with photo textures on them, desaturate the photo texture entirely and um, mask it off and reveal portions that I want to reveal only. Um, and just kind of reduce the opacity, I think um, probably to around 20 or 30 or somewhere around there, but um, not, not too extreme, the photo texture. And uh, as I clean this up, I think I'll just say um, links to my portfolio in DeviantArt or whatever you want to look at. Um, if you're a fan, I guess uh, DeviantArt or if you want to become a fan or whatever. Um, and then if you're an art director, check out my portfolio. That's going to be linked in the bottom. And um, 
or if you want to hire me to do something, uh, whatever. Um, and I mean, if you want to watch more of these videos, subscribe, support me, darn it. Uh, yeah, well, I'll see y'all later. Thank you for watching. There's the shadows. Peace out.